a follow-up to my last video on St. Patrick's Day. Or as apparently everyone calls it now, St. Patty's Day with double D's. Because, you know, Patrick's Day just sounds too boring and traditional. Assholes. So, yeah. Uh, despite my rant, I actually ended up going out for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, my friend Doug from New Haven actually took the train up to New London, and we pretty much got drunk. It's pretty much the one thing that everyone does, and I know I've ranted about how anti I am to it. So I thought if I was the designated driver, it wouldn't be a total, you know, cop out. Kind of was. Anywho, uh, yeah, so he got there at like 9.30 in the morning. We were both tilted up. That's the one thing I like about St. Patrick's Day. To be honest, there's one thing I like about it. It is the fact that it is the most punk friendly holiday of all the holidays. I was in my Utila kilt. Most of you have seen me in it. And he was in his in his traditional kilt with the this little, like, little pouch in the front, his little man purse. I'm gonna get a comment about that. Anywho, so we ended up getting breakfast. Uh, walked around downtown in London, which is not as easy to do when you're in kilts because the fear of getting stabbed, which is always there, was like double breakfast. And pretty much the first bar opened at like eleven. And that's when we started drinking. And then I had Guinness, which uh, I forgot how much I didn't like, which ended up actually kind of being a good thing. And then I wasn't really drinking a lot of it. I had like two Guinnesses throughout the whole day and like two things of flavored vodka that I'd never tried before, but I always wanted to. It was just drinking and waiting for the parade, which was supposed to be at one. And it was such, such a little, little sad, pathetic parade. Every float, and by that I mean, there was a pickup truck with people in costumes, some sort of themed costumes, throwing candy at off of it. Avery Float uh, had like a good 30 to 40 feet between it just to make sure it would actually last a real length of time versus lasting 10 minutes. And pretty much throughout this entire experience, my friend Doug was drinking. And afterwards, we actually marked off uh, exactly how much he drank. And it ended up being about nine Guinnesses. And this is all from 11 to, I'd say about four, so you five hours. Nine Guinnesses, one incredibly tall gin, gin and tonic, which actually ended up being cheaper because we were at a gay bar. And that's how those things work. Uh, and also, every time he thought he was drinking too much or he started to feel it, he did what most people do. They turned to food. He had two fully loaded uh, Brockworks, and that had, oh, what was it? It was uh, onions, green peppers, some other shit on it, like topped on top of that in a bun, and it had fries on the side, and coleslaw, and this is important why I mention this, especially to me anyway, the onion slices, because uh, those came back. He finished drinking his last Guinness, had like one thing of green water that he asked our pretty bartender. And so he's done, we get in my car, we get on the highway, and about 30 seconds onto the fact that there's no more shoulder and I'm in the left lane doing 60, he said, he suddenly arches his back and goes, oh god, um, I'll, I'm not feeling so good. And he just rolls down his window, and I would like to recreate what happened next. It streaked all along the back and down the sides. And he had like eaten like 30 minutes. It had been like 30 minutes since the last time he, he ate too, so it was all still full. Uh, it's like four days later. I'm still finding shit, like pieces, in, in between the door and the window. And I felt it hit my face. And there's that moment when it hits your face and you're just like, Okay! You know, like, uh, I'm actually jumping past the freak out 
the just straight all out, let's just smile and nod, and I can I can drink away this problem later, which I'm still trying, and it won't work. Um, but, yeah, so he, he seemed instantly better, which most people do when they drink. And we then, uh, he said he'd make it up to me. Well, he slurred he'd make it up to me. And we went to a car wash, like, immediately. And we got the side of my car clean. He pulled up in the tank, so, you know, I can't grudge him with that. He seemed, honestly, you know, despondent about that. And just starts going. He starts puking again. Like, it's just... And on the those cases, that we, we, we literally, I pulled right in, right in front of someone's driveway. And my main thought is, oh dear Lord, if these people come out of their house, I'm going to have to just drive with him puking out the door, because I do not like confrontation at all. So he's puking, and it's just, it just keeps coming. It's just going. And finally he stops, and he got it all on the inside of the door, like pretty much from the handle down. And he had it all over his chest and down his arm. Oh, God. It's just horrible. But I should also mention that this was also actually the first time that got to meet Kamal, which left a very big impression on him. Oh, man, it's so funny. Oh, other people's misery is so 